بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم ما بعد continuing on in our treaties our study of al-aqid al-wasatiyah by Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah rahimahullah ta'ala we left off when the Shaykh began to talk about iman and before that after his uh, previously we spoke about his introduction very briefly and about firqat al-najiyah and the creed of Ahl sunnati wal jamaah in general. Shaykh al-Islam said, Qala Shaykh, فهذا الاعتقاد فرقة الناجية المنصورة إلى قيام الساعة أهل السنة والجماعة. So the Shaykh is letting us know this whole treatise of Aqeed al-Tawasatiyah is a clarification, a bayan of what the creed of Ahl sunnah what does Ahl sunnah believe? What does it mean to be from Ahl sunnah Is it a, uh, just another group like the other groups and sects? Or is it a, um, a series or a whole bunch of issues and messiah and creed and so forth which comes together to form the general belief of Ahl Sunnah? And of course, it is the second thing that I mentioned. It is a series of beliefs which forms the basis of our creed. This forms the basis of the Muslim's creed in accordance with the Quran and the Sunnah of the Prophet And so this is the aqeed of Ahl Sunniti wal Jama'ah. As we mentioned before, Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah, he said, فَمَنْ قَالَ بِالْكِتَابِ وَالسُنَّةِ وَالْإِجْمَاعِ كَانَ مِنْ أَحْلَ سُنَّةِ وَالْجَمَاعِ Whoever acts or and speaks and believes in, uh, in accordance with the Quran and the Sunnah, and the ijma, ijma meaning the consensus. The consensus of who? First and foremost, beginning with the, the first and foremost jama'ah, or the asl of the jama'ah, which is the sahaba, sahaba to Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. What they had uh, agreeance in creed. Of course, the sahaba didn't differ in creed. So, this is, and, and nor did the salaf. Yani, there were those individuals who may have uh, made mistakes or in particular Messiah, not including the Sahaba radiallahu ta'ala anhu, but those later generations in which there could have been issues where an Imam or what have you had made a mistake or had not received the Nasus, not been aware of the Hadith of the Prophet sallallahu which affirmed the creed uh, of Ahl Sunnati wal Jama'ah. But as far as the Ijma', what they are united upon, then that is what forms the basis of Islam. As Shaykh al-Islam said, Kitab wa Sunnah wa Ijma'. And then if a person believes in that, kan min ahl sunnati wa jama'. Then they are from ahl Sunnah, ahl sunnati wa jama'. Then the Shaykh mentioned, after that he said, so then he began to give us some light de details, although this is still general about what does that mean, the aqidah and creed of Ahl Sunnati wal Jama'ah. Qala Shaykh al-Islam, wa huwa al-imanu billah, wa malaikatihi, wa kutubihi, wa rasulihi, wa liyawm al-akhir, wa al-ba'ath, ba'd al-mawt, wa al-iman bil-qadri khayrihi wa shar. So Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah, rahimahullah ta'ala, began by dealing with iman in general of what it means, the Iman, uh, the concept of faith in Iman, which comes from the Hadith, the asl of this here, and the asl of Iman, when you talk about it in a general sense, mujmil, then it comes from the Hadith of the Prophet ﷺ, because Jibreel uh, when he came to the Prophet ﷺ in the form of a man, and as we are all well aware in the Hadith of Jibreel, he asked about uh, Islam. Then the second thing he asked about, Akhbirniya an al-Iman. Then the Prophet Sallallahu described what Iman is. He said, "In tu'minu, in billahi wal malaikati wa kutubihi wa rasulihi wa liyum al-akhir, wa tu'minu wa tu'mina bi qadri khayrihi wa shar." So he began by giving us what it means in general iman in islam the general meaning which is to believe 
in Allah, His angels, His books, His messengers, the day of judgment, or the, the, the resurrection after moat, after dying. And Iman in the Qadr, in the divine destiny of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the decree of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the good of it and the bad of it. Qala Shaykh Bada rahimahullah ta'ala dhikra aqidat al firqat al naji al mansura ahl al sunnati wal jama'ah bi dhikri al imani al am al mujmil alladhi yajibu ala kulli ahad fa innahu yajibu ala al mukallif an yu'mina billahi wa rasulihi wa yukirru bi jami'i ma ja'a bihi rasul min min amr al iman billah wa malaikatihi wa kutubi wa rasulihi wal yawm al akhir wa ma amara bihi rasul wa naha bi hayth yukirru bi jami'i ma akhbara akhbara bihi wa ma amara bihi so here shaykh al islam he began Rahimahullah Ta'ala, by mentioning the belief of Ahlul Sunnah, the saved sect, Ahlul Sunnah Wal Jama'ah, by mentioning Iman in general, which is an obligation upon every person to believe. And then Shaykh Al Islam said, For verily, the obligation upon every person who is responsible, who's mukallif, meaning that they are mature and they have they possess intellect is that they believe in Allah and his messenger and they believe in everything that the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam that he came with from the issues of iman related to the issues of iman billah and his angels the books the divine books that were revealed which is the speech of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his messengers believing in them and the day of judgment and everything every affair of the messenger alayhi salatu wasalam and everything that he prohibited believing in uh, and following his prohibitions those things that he prohibited us from we are prohibited from and we avoid uh, and this is and this is achieved by agree by uh, believing in everything that he uh, told us about from those things which he commanded us to do and those commun- those things which he prohibited us from. And this is uh, the belief of Ahlul Sunnati Wal Jama'ah. So that is the belief, that's what it means in general to believe in those things, the pillars of Iman, the six pillars of Iman, which, what are the six pillars of Iman again? And tu'mina billah is believing in Allah, wa malaikati and his angels, wa kutubihi, Wa kutubihi and his uh, his books, the divine books, wa rasulihi and his messengers, alayhim afdal salatu wa salam, wa rasulihi wa liyom al-akhir and the day of judgment, and that will be uh, raised up on the day of judgment, we will come out of our graves, uh, and the divine destiny, the good and the evil of it, meaning the, cre- the qadr, the qadr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Those are the six pillars of iman. And that is an obligation on every Muslim to believe. If a person fails to believe in even one of those pillars of Iman, then they are a disbeliever. So if someone says, I believe in the Prophet ﷺ, and I believe in the Qur'an, but I don't believe in what the message uh, which we refer to as the original gospel of Jesus, and the, and the, the Torah, the original Torah, of Musa alayhi salatu wasalam. If they say, I don't believe in Musa's book though, in what Musa, the original book that's untampered with, uh, that's no longer with us, and that's been abrogated, I don't believe in even that original one that Musa alayhi salatu wasalam came with. This person is a disbeliever. They've disbelieved in the Qutubihi, in the books of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. All of those are the books, the, the Psalms of David. Alayhi salatu wasalam, that he was uh, Dawood, what he was sent with, and Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam, and all those messengers, alayhim afdal salatu wasalam, that were sent with a message, then we believe in them, and we believe in their message, and we believe in the angels, and we believe in the day of judgment. So, failure, if one fails to believe in any one of those pillars of Iman, they are not a Muslim. They are, in fact, uh, a disbeliever. In Allah 
and his messenger alayhi salatu wasalam, because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has ordered us to believe in, in those uh, pillars of Iman and the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasalam, informed us and told us to believe in those pillars of Iman Shaykh <laughs> al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah rahimahullah ta'ala he said if a person who is responsible they believe in all of those the iman in general those things which we mentioned they believe in it to- in totally in totality and they are resurrected before Allah with this general iman and they believe in everything in general that the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, came with meaning they might not know all the details and so forth but everything that that the Prophet وسلم, uh, came with that they're aware of and they and that are uh, from the general aspects of Iman they believe in it and they practice it and they do not reject it those details uh, intentionally then they are a mu'min then they are a mu'min they are uh, in that respect considered one of the mu'minin because they believe in what they were given from the message of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa ala alihi wa sallam. Shaykh Salih bin Fuzan mentions in relation to this about Iman, Hafidhullah ta'ala, he mentions that Iman, as far as a linguistic term, uh, means tasdiq, means belief in general. And that as far as a sharia term, iman. So this is iman, this is more the tafsil, some of the details, as iman as a sharia term. Mujmil in general, it refers to the six uh, pillars of iman. But when we come to as a sharia term, it refers to, as Sheikh Salim bin Fawzan, he says, shir'an, annuhu qul bilisan wa ittiqad bil qalb that Iman is, as a Sharia term, it means that uh, the statement of the tongue, uh, belief in the heart, and actions on the limbs. So for example, part of Iman is actions on the limbs. For example, making Salat. Salat has aspects of perhaps all of the pillars of Iman, uh, all three of those components of Iman. Because it requires that you make the shahada on your tongue, ashhadu an la ilaha illallah wa ashhadu anna Muhammad rasulullah, you make the tashahud, you uh, make your takbir, takbir, takbir al ihram, and so forth. And you do actions of the limbs, you make sujood, you make ruku', rafa min ruku', uh, making sujood, prostration, um, sitting between the uh, the two sujoods or the two prostrations. All of those are actions that are physical actions. Those are actions on the limbs. They're all, they all make up iman. As well as the belief in the heart, of course, having ikhlas, sincerity to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and believing in the salat that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam came with. So all of those actions of iman, they are the components of the, the tongue, the heart, and the, uh, the actions of the limbs are comprised of that. And some of the things Sheikh Salib bin Fuzan mentioned, and this has a little bit more details and we'll end here. He said, Iman Billah, it is believing with certainty that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has, uh, uh, that Allah is the Lord of everything and that He owns everything and that He has complete and perfect characteristics, you know, divine uh, characteristics and that he is free from any imperfections and any 
shortcomings, subhanahu wa ta'ala, and that he is mustahik, he is worthy of worship. He is the only one worthy of worship. That comprises iman billah. And then iman bil malaika. He says that it is believing that the angels are are here, that they're with us, that they're present, and that they are as they were described in the Quran and the Sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, as Allah subhanahu wa taala mentions all th- uh, in many verses in the Quran, ibad uh, ibad muk- uh, mukrimun la yasbaqunahu bil qawli wa hum bi amrihi ya'malun that those angels that they are those um, those beings that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala those slaves of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala those esteemed slaves of Allah tabarak wa ta'ala who do not miss a single statement and whatever they're commanded with they do so the angels have perfect ta'atillah they are perfect in their obedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala they do not disobey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Those are one of the descriptions of the angels in the Quran. And so we believe that because it's from the kalam of Allah. It's from the divine speech of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So whatever the Quran and whatever the authentic sunnah uh, gives us as far as the uh, characteristics of the malaika, the angels, then we believe that. And then the third pillar, of course, is Iman bil, bil Kutub. And that means that you believe in the books of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that He revealed to His messengers, alayhim afdal salatu wa salam. And that these uh, revelations, this revelation from that was revealed in these books are the speech of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They are the divine, perfect speech of Allah. Although they were tampered with, the, the previous messengers messages were tampered with by uh, the children of Israel and those other people who had went astray and changed the message, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, lets us know in the Quran. So it's an obligation for us to have iman, to believe in what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala called the, to- the Torah, Wa Injil, Wa Zabur, and the Quran. That we have that we believe in those books and that we believe in those books that were not mentioned to us. So that is what's called Iman Mujmil. That's a general Iman. That we haven't we don't know all the names of all the prophets and messengers that were sent by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There were some that Allah did not name for us in the Quran. He gave us those which the lesson was important for us to know and understand about. But he didn't name all his messengers for us. And they're not all mentioned in the Sunnah or the Quran. Nor are all the uh, books necessarily mentioned specifically in the Quran or in the Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. But we believe in that. We call that Iman Mujmil. That we believe in it in general. Those things which are general for us, that Allah let us know that there are those He didn't mention by name, that we believe in them. And why that is from the divine hikmah of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, why He did not mention those things for us. So it lets us know the one of the hikmahs that we learn from this and the wisdoms is that it lets us know that the 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 ibra or the the ibra, those lessons and things that can be derived are it's sufficient with the stories that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave us in the Quran. That those other aspects of Iman we're not responsible, we're not going to be held accountable for that knowledge. Okay, so that is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's divine hikmah that he mentioned the story of some and he left off the story of others. He gave us what we need to do in this life to practice and come closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That is one of the uh, beneficial wisdoms of the uh, of having iman and those things which we are only generally aware of. We are only aware of so many of the malaika. And only so so many of the books. Also, iman bi rusul, and this applies to what I just mentioned about the rusul, uh, rusul. You know, all the the prophets, and that Allah Subhanahu wa Taala uh, mentioned, "Qala Subhana fi kitab al-Karim, wa rusulin 
قد قصصناهم عليك من قبل ورسول لم نقصصهم عليك الله سبحانه وتعالى says that exactly as we were mentioning before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in his divine speech his perfect speech subhanahu wa ta'ala he says uh, messengers some that we uh, that we told you about we gave you the stories about them and uh, from from before and some that we did not give you the message uh, we did not give you the stories about them so it shows us what that's uh, that's mujmil that that is general that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is giving us gave us some of the stories of some of the messengers which we can derive lessons from and some he did not subhanahu wa ta'ala tell us about and that we that knowledge was not necessary for us to get to paradise that knowledge was not necessary for us uh, and of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's divine wisdom he didn't depart that knowledge to us subhanahu wa ta'ala and that also believing in the afdal al anbiya the the best of them which they refer to ul al azm and they are Nuh alayhi salatu wasalam, wa Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam, wa Musa alayhi salatu wasalam, wa Isa alayhi salatu wasalam, wa Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam. Those are the best of the NBA. And then the the last of them, of course, is the is Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam, our Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam, and that he was the last of the anbiya and the best of them alayhim afdal salatu wasalam may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, 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 alayhim afdal salatu wasalam and then the final or the, the fifth uh, pillar of iman Shaykh Salim bin Fuzan says and also that we believe in that after death that we will be taken from our graves resurrected from our graves uh, living on the day of judgment and that we between the creation there will be uh, the people will arbitrate and, and have judgments between them okay they will they will have you know for when they were being oppressed in the dunya and things like this in this life there will their their uh, their matters and affairs will be settled between them and that there, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes and in the authentic sunnah of the Prophet وسلم, about all those aspects and affairs of the day of judgment uh, in, with details. They come in uh, some things in the, in the Quran and some things as far as more details in the sunnah of the Prophet And in fact, you'll find uh, most of the surahs uh, in Jews Amma, Jews Amma, that you'll find uh, many of the uh, surahs they're referring to the Day of Judgment and the things that await us in general, some of the signs of the Day of Judgment and the things that will happen to the to uh, and signs for us to take heed from and lessons. And then the last uh, pillar of Iman. And Shaykh Salih bin Fuzani describes Al Iman bi Qadr Khairihi wa Shar. He said that it is believing that Allah subhanahu uh, that He knows and has decreed everything and its time before it was uh, created, before it became apparent. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created. Uh, and, and was aware with his divine, his infinite knowledge, he was aware of things before they were created, before they became into being. And he wrote it in Allah, Filloh al Mahfuz. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wrote it. These are called the Maratib al Qadr. So the first thing is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, his ilm is infinite. His ilm is infinite about his creation and he decreed everything. Uh, and then he wrote everything, subhanahu wa ta'ala, in Allah. Al Mahfuz. This is a part of the Qadr as well, and also that he uh, gave everything. It's you know created everything and gave it its due proportion, and it was in accordance with his Mashiya, uh, Mashiya, uh in its appointed term and its appointed measurement. That this is in accordance 
accordance to the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that everything happens in accordance with the will will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The good and the evil happens in accordance in general, in the general will. And this is very important for us to understand the difference with Mashia and Irada. And Irada Uh, and the Mashia, there is the Arada uh, Koniya wa Arada Sharia. Arada Koniya means that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, in general, you know, He created everything and He is, uh, everything is in accordance with His uh, divine will, His will. And that's in general, that's koniya. Shariya is those things which please Allah. That has to do with those things that please Allah. So the other thing is in accordance with His will in general. That nothing can come into creation, nothing came into creation without Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's will. And He is the creator of everything. So, for, uh, for example, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created uh, good and evil. He created belief and disbelief. However, from his divine wisdom, he allowed for the good and the bad. He gave us the, the, the choice to choose imma kafirun wa imma shakura, that we would be thankful or we would be ungrateful and choose disbelief or we would be thankful and choose belief. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala decreed that, created that, allows that, and that's accordance, in accordance with his divine will. However, what pleases Allah is what we call irada uh, shari'a. That it has to do with the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that Allah is pleased with those things in accordance with the shari'a, meaning that a person believes in Him and worships Him in a manner that suits His majesty, in accordance with the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Those things please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But the fact that a person does disobedience to Allah, that isn't, that it goes against, that isn't the uh, uh, irada shari'a. So that disobedience does not please Allah, but it's in accordance with His divine will. So hopefully that is clear, and we'll talk more uh, in the future about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the qadr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and its four levels, as we mentioned, arba maratib, the fact that Allah created everything, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala willed everything, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wrote everything, and that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, uh, I think... Uh, and that we said that he, yeah, you know, we said that he wrote everything, he created everything, and he everything is in, in accordance with his his will. And that uh, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala he decreed everything for its appointed term. And we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil and make this uh, a benefit for ourselves on the day of judgment and anything I said that was correct was from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala anything that I said was incorrect was from myself in the shaitan wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam